This is Big Lou, and he is one amazing alligator snapping turtle. If you look inside of his mouth, he's got a little red lure for bringing fish in. They got about 2,500 pounds of bite strength. He can bite a two by two right in half. Hi, I'm Jay Brewer. I'm here today to answer some questions off Twitter. This is Reptile Support. Okay, at Prenzer Ribe, how does a chameleon change color? Well, that's kind of a technical question, but you know what? I'm gonna get some help with a chameleon. Okay, so we got Graco, and it's actually a panther chameleon. Now if you see, they don't really change color, they just modify the colors that are there by squeezing open and close and dilating like your eyeball. There's another cool part about him, he has two eyeballs, that work completely independently. So, he's actually great at catching his bugs and insects, and look at how beautiful he is. At Maggot Stomp, do alligators chew their food? Absolutely not! And you know what? I think we'll go feed Darth Gator, our giant gator, and you'll see, he just swallows it whole. Okay, this is Darth and Gomer. Darth, let's show them. Do you chew your food? Oh. There you go. He doesn't chew his food, he swallows it whole. The only time you would even consider it kind of chewing their food is the attempt of maybe breaking the shell of a crab or something like that. At Jack Vandertoll, if you were bitten by a venomous snake, would you know what to do? Unfortunately, I'd really know what to do because I've been bit by a venomous snake at 23 years old and it was not a pretty sight. Some people actually say the first thing you're supposed to do is suck out the venom. Completely a myth. That venom that went in is in, end of story. Truth is, when I got bit, the first thing I did was start sucking the venom out, so I thought, my lips started tingling, and the tingling, I thought, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have sucked it out, it got in my mouth, but that's not what happened. The effects of the venom were already through my whole system in seconds, and my lips were tingling because of the venom inside my bloodstream. That being said, if you get bit by a venomous snake, the most important thing to do is stay calm, and work your way towards a hospital as quick as possible. At Planet Reptile 23, question. For all snake handlers, wildlife experts, handling dangerous reptiles, what type of handling gear do you commonly use when handling snakes? Some kind of snakes are not venomous, so I might take a little risk and use my hands. Best tools ever made, end of story. That being said, if I'm gonna hold something dangerous, I'm gonna actually need a little bit of space. Something like a pair of tongs, we also use these for feeding big pythons and stuff because the snake's excited, going after its food. Then, the snake hook. Snake hook, what it actually is for is that when the venomous snake that you're holding drops his head in here, he's no longer can strike left or right, then you got your tongs, and that can be used for a lot of different things, for handling tarantulas, scorpions, little venomous animals and also for feeding small animals, it works really well. At James R. Us 42, without cheating, what venomous snake has the longest fangs in the world? Wow, that's the easy one. I think I should get out a giant Gaboon Viper and show you how amazing they are. This is a Gaboon Viper. Got the longest fang of any venomous snake in the world, and you can tell that from that big head, and actually has the most venom to dump at one time. Not to mention one of the fastest striking snakes. Even has a horn like a rhino viper. They're closely related. Both of them have this incredible pattern and color to hide in the forest floor in Africa. AAA1E2R3. Wow, that one I better go back to school for. <laughs> What's the difference between a gator and a crocodile anyway? A crocodile, generally speaking, has a long, slender, more V-shaped nose where an alligator's got that nice U-shaped nose. Now, the interesting part about that question is there's actually only two types of gators in the whole world. They actually come from China and America. If it's not a Chinese alligator or it's not an American alligator, it is an alligator anyway. At Tengo89, how do eyelidless cre creatures clean the moisture of their eyes? You know what? I think I'm gonna cheat on this one. Get a subject out to show you. This is George the Giant New Caledonia Gecko, largest gecko in the world. Now, geckos a lot of times have eyelids, but they don't close completely. This one has no eyelids, and what it does is actually just lick their eye like a windshield wiper, kind of wild. 
But then when you have a snake, for instance, it doesn't have eyelids either. It gets a brand new lens every time it sheds. Pretty amazing. Okay, at Graham R. Kid, can reptiles be said to have personalities? Absolutely. So I have a lot of monitors, lizards, and they have a lot of personality. So today I'm gonna play with one of them and let you see what a rambunctious little critter this particular one is. And maybe we'll get a second one out and you can see how calm and relaxed the other one is. I'm gonna show you a little mini dragon that's got tons of personality. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here, here, come on. So we're gonna take him for a swim. Here we go, here we go, whoa, there we go. So you see, every animal's got a little bit different personality. This guy here is a pure swimming, hunting, wild creature. Oh, there you go. It's great exercise for our animals to interact with people. And this is one of the ways it's called enrichment to make an animal love its life. I'm gonna show you a completely different personality. Come on, come on, come on. So he's pretty laid back, so much so that he won't chase it like that. Come on, his name is Fabio, and he's just a big sweetheart. He's like more relaxed, more chill. Here, here, come on, there you go. Gentle, relaxed, just a complete, whoa, what did you do? Vanishing chicken. <laughs> the other guy, if I tried to do that, he'd have my hand, but all of them are very cool. Each one's a little bit different, kind of like you. At Una Mary, what if dragons exist in real life? Oh God. I'm gonna show you some footage of a giant dragon in Komodo Island. Look at this, guys, this is the most incredible time of my life. This is the peak right here. I don't know if it's gonna get better than this. The two biggest lizards in the island meet up at dinner time on the beach. Wow, look at him. They exist. Okay, at TNT Gal, why do cobras have hoods? Actually, it's to make them look big and scary. When they jump up, they triple their size, they start making a loud noise, and it's gonna scare off any animal that's gonna attack them. At Swagna, are iguanas dangerous? Can they bite? So, the funny part is, I think iguanas are the most underrated animal for being dangerous. Not only they have razor sharp claws, they have an incredible bite because they have to bite through lettuce, leafy stuff and get a clean cut. So unlike a snake that has really no bite except long teeth to hang on, these teeth are actually for cutting. I've seen some horrible bites from iguanas, but let me show you how beautiful they are. And to be fair, I've seen some amazing pet iguanas. I'm gonna show you one that we've had for many years. So this is actually Jolly Green. He's a rescue iguana because a lot of people don't realize iguanas can get big. And most people don't realize that they go in heat, kind of like a dog, except that when a male iguana goes into heat, they get very aggressive and they want to be dominant and they can bite you severely. That being said, they can be great animals and Jolly Green is luckily relaxed and he's about 25 years old. We've had him over 10 years. He's absolutely amazing, beautiful animal and not your normal iguana. At Baralfi, Komodo dragon saliva kill the prey? Actually, no. They used to say that the saliva would eventually kill it from infection, but that's not true, it's not the bacteria. The actual truth is their saliva is venom. That is made to paralyze the animal, just long enough for the Komodo dragon to actually finish it off and eat it. At Janet SK Watson, how do you tell the difference between a python and a boa? Okay, so boas and pythons are both constrictors. They're both snakes. They're both reptiles. But boas have live birth and pythons lay eggs. And those are all the questions for today. Peace out.